This is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today we're doing O ox beetle larva. This is for our my bugabet. Um, basically, it's an alphabet with uh, insects, and this particular insect that you're seeing in front of you, the basically the uh, um, image currently in pencil is an ox beetle larva and they are big and fat and can fit in your hand. Um, an ox beetle is from um, the stag beetle family and basically what is it I've got here it's a strategious alley alio aloeus alo Aeolius? Jeez, my Latin sucks. Um, it's S-T-R-A-T-E-G-U-S-A-L-O-E-U-S. -E -E um, but anyways, they uh, these guys are huge. These are really, really big bugs. Um, and in um, Asia, they're, they'll, they'll uh, have wrestling matches with them. The, the, the males... They'll have the males like fight each other and they'll take bets over who will push the other one off the, uh, off a, um, a platform. But, um, and I can imagine that, that they're actually really tasty because, um, they're big larva. You can probably eat these boogers, but they'll fit in your hand. They're huge. And, uh, I thought... <laughs> They make the perfect shape of an O. So the word, the, the name of these critters is um, ox beetle for O. And they curl up to make an O shape. And I thought it would be the perfect for this particular letter. They have two legs in the front. Let's see here. Oh, actually, they've got three. I'm wrong. Sorry, six all together. Your, your standard, you know, what it, if it's an insect, it's got six legs, right? So, it's like, let's get the number of legs right here. That might help. It's like, when you're, you're taught standard biology... An insect has six legs. That's how you know you that an arachnid or a spider has eight, but insects have six. In various kingdoms, in the insect kingdom, they've got six. That's why I was looking at this image and I'm going, wait a second here. It can't have two legs. It's got to have six because or two on one side excuse me two on basically three on one side three on the other so you got six legs because we're talking insect insect must have six legs otherwise it's something else it's not an insect anymore it's maybe related to an insect but it is not an insect um what is it uh, um decapoda as uh um Crabs have 10? Yeah. So it's like as I, I reach back to my old biology classes, and while you're drawing this stuff, one of the, one of the advantages of whenever you do animals, it's like you start you have to start reading this stuff. You um you'll go below. I I'm I've been trying to be really good if you've um if you're watching this and you want to find out more about the animals that I'm drawing in these. Um, particular pieces I always post the Wikipedia site and if you can always try to donate to Wikipedia at least a couple of times a year if you can um, Wikipedia is one of uh, one of as far as I'm concerned the best resources on the internet it's been volunteer for years they don't take mo the money that they use they use to keep the site going and most of the information on there, especially um, historical information, 
Um, natural history information, especially, is usually really, really good on, on Wikipedia. They're very, very good about being accurate on that stuff. So that if you, it's, it's not quite like the Encyclopedia Britannica or when I was growing up, you just had encyclopedias that were books. And a book is out of date the soon, as soon as it gets published. Whereas with Wikipedia, there's always somebody going in and updating the information. And these guys, these guys have really nice big red heads and there's an eye and their mandibles. And they have these, um, I'm trying to th remember what these little, these little things right here, the, the little dots on the side of a caterpillar, those are actually air holes. They, they breathe through those babies. They breathe through their skin and they breathe through um, these little holes. They have really, really interesting biology. You think about how many more millions of years of evolved insects are than we are. They, they, they got, they kind of reached the hiatus of their evolution a heck of a lot sooner than we hit ours. And it's very interesting in nature the the way that basically um, nature will evolve things to a point where it needs to. And once a creature kind of hits the apex of where it needs to evolve, it'll just won't change much. And insects are one of those, those creatures that uh, it's sometimes I feel like we live on this planet with, you know, these parallel worlds and the insects live in a world of their own because you, if you've ever noticed, like with an ant, it doesn't know you exist. It goes about its little ant business and doesn't know, you know, you exist or what's going on. And we have all these amazing creatures on our planet, like the ox beetle. Like I said, when these things evolve, they eat roots and things from my understand. Um, and they live most of their life as a larva under the ground. And then when they change into beetles, they don't li live for be be as adults for all that long. And they're huge. It's like both, both the, the, um, the beetle is huge and the larva is huge, but they're not, um, they, they can't hurt you. That's why a lot of times, um, um, kids in Japan, especially the big deal is to have one of these things as a pet, not the, the larva, but the adult beetle. I mean, it's, it's kind of like when I was growing up having a, um, gardener snake, garter snake was a big deal as having as a pet. You know, you could find them in the woods and you could put them in a, a glass jar and you could feed them and keep them alive. And they were fun to find. It's kind of the same thing that they do with the beetles in Japan. It's a big deal if you find a beetle to take home as a pet. And as we're doing, basically this is the, um, you can tell I'm, I'm doing kind of a, like a scratchy outline and then I heavy it up a bit. But we're just about done with this particular insect. And what I'll do before um, I paint it, I'll heavy up the lines one more time. And after I paint it, I'll heavy up the lines one more time. But we're, we're about done here. Basically, um, the pencil line that's underneath, I will let the ink dry for about 30 minutes to an hour at least. Because that'll keep for if you you erase the lines right away. There's some there's a blob of ink here. There's other blobs of ink on this, and if you are to erase the pencil line underneath right now, um, most likely you'll get smearing. So you want to avoid that smearing by letting the the ink. It's primarily a petroleum based ink when you're using ballpoint pen. You'll want to let that ink dry for at least 30 minutes, an hour at best is fine, um, before you erase all the pencil lines. 
And then I'll go over this one more time, like I said, before I start painting. And then I'll go over one more time after the painting because pigment will lie on top of the ink and will dull the color of the line. So that's about it for this drawing of an ox beetle era. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. If you would like to support my work, I'm on Patreon. I give all kinds of free digital downloads, and at different tiers, um, I give away original artwork, and I'm also producing a comic book page once a week there. Uh, come over, check it out. You might enjoy it. But thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching the video. There will be another one next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.